I want to make it clear, I will never apologize for wanting to put the needs of my people first, of wanting to put Americans first. I will never apologize for having that mentality and that ideology. When I, when I know that there are 500,000 homeless Americans, when I know there are 50,000 homeless veterans, when I know that there are 3.6 million black children living in poverty, how, how dare Democrats say they care about black lives, but they'll take care of the rest of the globe ahead of our people. I ask voters in this election, foundationally, what, what matters to you? Welcome to the Michelle Tafoya podcast. Scott Pressler goes by at the persistence on X. And persistence is a word that sums this guy up perfectly. This is a man, the son of a retired naval captain who is giving every ounce of his energy and his time to this 2024 election. And you're going to hear why, and you're going to hear how, and you're probably going to be inspired to maybe want to do something yourself. I don't know, but I've never met a grassroots organizer like Scott Pressler. And he's got 1.6 million followers on X, which caught my attention because it's not usually, you know, like a political activist who will have that sort of following some congressmen and senators don't even have that number. So I think you're going to enjoy this. If you haven't met Scott Pressler, you're about to. And I think you're going to be pretty impressed, a little surprised, and uh, walk away feeling hopefully inspired. Scott Pressler is next. Scott Pressler may be the most sought after guest these days by a bunch of people. And we've had some challenges getting him. I'm so glad you have been able to join us. Uh, and I know that you've just been doing media upon media, but I want to start with this. I, I found you online. Uh, you have 1.6 million followers on X. And this all started in kind of just a, a, a really basic way. You are, to me, you're the epitome of a grassroots political activist. So how would you describe the moment, the event, the, the thing that launched you to be going from Scott to Scott, I'm going to try to change the world? Well, thank you for having me, Michelle. It's, it's been kind of um, an evolution. You know, I look at other figures in the conservative movement and other stories, they had that one moment that really launched them into the stratosphere. And with me, it's almost been like building on a foundation and that foundation just gets taller and taller and stronger. And so, you know, really, I think it's important people understand I, I was inspired by President Obama. In 2012, he was reelected and I just thought to myself, Scott, you are the problem because you're not the solution. You're not knocking on doors. You're not registering voters. You're not getting out the vote. Your inaction in part helped to reelect President Obama. And so I moved halfway across the country. I was working at an elementary school. I was a dog walker. And I said, you're going to get a job in politics. So my first job was helping to elect Governor Greg Abbott in Texas. And after the passing of Justice Scalia, when we had a four conservative, four liberal Supreme Court, I knew how decisive that 2016 was. So I spent two years helping to defeat Hillary, elect Donald Trump. But one of the moments that changed my life was in 2019, after we elected Donald Trump, he talked about the city of Baltimore. And when I said, I'm going to Baltimore to pick up trash, and we did with 200 volunteers picking up 12 tons of trash in 12 hours. That really brought me to the next level where people didn't know I was doing the voter registration and all of those things. But I officially became the cleanup guy. And that's where I think a lot of people really know me and know my origin as the guy that cleans up cities. I want to go back to, to 2012 when you said you're part of the problem because you didn't go do what you needed to do. 
to keep Obama out of office. At that point, what is your, obviously you were leaning politically right, which I'm going to be straightforward. I think people who find out you were in the school, you know, teaching school in a dog walker, they probably didn't pin you for a guy on the right. And so, you know, what was it about the Obama administration, if it was just that, that made you say this can't continue? Thank you. Well, I, I do want to make it clear. I was uh, a, a beautiful support staff in the front office to our 800 kids and our 1600 moms and dads. So I'm the smiling face that when moms and dads come in, I make sure they're taken care of. But yeah, I, I think uh, people need to understand I'm an Eagle Scout and my dad is a retired Navy captain. So my family has a history of service. I've lived a, a life of service and giving back to my community and, and wanting to you know, have a good leadership role and responsibility to my community. And I think that's in part why I lean conservative because of my upbringing. And I've always had a, um, I mean, I'm a Taurus. Taurus are all about diligently getting things done and, 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 and work ethic. And so I'm a Taurus through and through. But I just, I saw, look, uh, the, the economy, the, the lack of jabs. I saw litigation being pushed down the throats of the American people, whether or not we wanted it. And I think that's why in 2010, President Obama lost control of the House of Representatives because they pushed the Affordable Care Act down the throats of the American people. And that was the birth of the Tea Party, truly in 2010. And uh, I saw so many members of my generation, I'm a millennial, I know that, you know, conservatives were just so, you know, fresh that you would never know nowadays. And so many of us couldn't find jobs within our fields. We were sold the American dream that you go to college and you're going to get a job. Not for me. I, I graduated with a 3.63. I'm a, a pretty humbly smart cookie. And despite applying at USA.gov every single day, and I mean Parks and Rec, to TSA, to police officer, to anything and everything, people don't understand that anything in the government takes time. So when you apply for a job, you may not hear back for six months before you're even starting the process of looking for a job. And so uh, for, for a lot of people, especially in my generation, it was uh, the economy and making sure that we could still have, Michelle, our American dream that we were promised. So you became the, the, the pick up the trash guy or uh, the cleanup guy. And there are some viral videos of you out there that people should see of uh, you saying, I don't understand why we have homeless people in America and underserved communities, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, and yet we're yes. spending a ton of our tax money to support illegal immigrants. Is that the gist of what you said? What, what inspired that, that viewpoint? So we're, we're on the streets of San Francisco. And so, you know, this is 2020. This is right before COVID. This is literally like when you see us wearing a mask in the video, people are like, oh, Scott, why are you wearing a mask? They don't understand we were the original mask wearers because in San Francisco, till to still to this day, <laughs> they do have the bubonic plague in California. And no, I'm not, that isn't hyperbole. I'm not joking. They do have typhus, which causes typhoid uh, fever. And I even recently read a story about a guy that does missionary work and he unfortunately stepped in some sort of bacteria that he had to have his like foot amputated. So when we were doing this cleanup in California, oh, I was so big on, on protection. And if you look at the work that we did in Van Nuys, we wore hazmat suits. And so we're out in the streets of San Francisco picking up literal human excrement, I'll say. And this girl, she comes up and she accosts me. And at first she's nice. And she's like, what are you guys doing? And I was like, oh, we're doing a cleanup. We're doing an act of love. We love our community. And she's like, why aren't you picking up your neighborhood? And again, I'm a Taurus. So like I had to bite my tongue for a moment because I didn't want to say anything that would get me in trouble. And I thought for a moment and thought, 
let well. We've done this in Baltimore, Chicago, Houston, uh, San Diego. Uh, you know, we've done this everywhere, Miami, all across the country. And I had just seen homeless people that literally look like they're dying on the streets. I mean, pallid. These people had no beat meat on their bones. And I just, I went off on her in righteous anger. And the and that video has been seen, I mean, probably 40 million times. I'm on the streets of San Francisco and I'm just telling the woman, why is it that we choose our country illegal aliens over homeless people sleeping on the streets? And I think it was just a built up of, of frustration and seeing so many problems happening in our country and seeing failed Democrat policies of decay on full display that I am walking in it. I'm trying to clean it up. I'm living it and I'm being accosted for doing an act of love. And it translated into that video. Hey, you know I love my friends at besthotgrill.com. They also make the best gas logs for your fireplace. And now's the time to prep for the colder fall and winter seasons that are fast approaching. And with rising energy costs, oh my gosh, have you looked at your bills? You'll want to warm one room, not your entire home, with a blazing Rasmussen gas log fire. With the convenience and controllability of a natural gas or propane gas log set, you can reduce the time you use your furnace. Gas logs are also an excellent source of emergency heat to keep your family warm during those pesky power outages. Rasmussen gas logs also make your fireplace look great when it's not in use. If your room has a modern or contemporary design, check out Rasmussen's popular fireballs and fire stones. Get a free personalized log set sizing recommendation and more information about USA made Rasmussen gas logs and Solaire infrared grills at besthotgrill.com. That's besthotgrill.com. USA made. Don't we love that? Rasmussen gas logs and Solaire infrared grills at besthotgrill.com. Why are illegal immigrants more important than Americans? I'd like to hear an answer. Why are people illegal? Why are illegal immigrants more important than homeless people sleeping on the streets? Why do we in the great one of the biggest economies here in California take care of illegal immigrants, but our people are sleeping on the streets? I'd like to hear an answer to that. Why? Nobody can ever answer It'll that be on question. You you... Why don't people put American citizens first, but illegal immigrants get everything? And I hope you post this. I want this to go viral because I give a damn and I care about my community. My dad is a retired Navy captain. He served our country honorably. My grandfather is a retired Navy captain and I'm doing my part to help our country because I give a damn and I'm gonna fight for it. And I am 100% voting for Donald Trump. The Democrat party does not put our people first. They put sanctuary cities first. They put illegal aliens first. They tax us, they tax our water. You can't even do laundry and shower on the same day. Well, while Nancy Pelosi is getting hundreds of thousands of dollars, robbing our pockets, not doing anything for our people, not passing legislation, passing out pens like they're candy. And I think it was just a built up. Of, of frustration and seeing so many problems happening in our country and seeing failed Democrat policies of decay on full display that I am walking in it. I'm trying to clean it up. I'm living it and I'm being accosted for doing an act of love. And it translated into that video. Which, as you said, went uber viral. And, and one of the parts of that video that sticks out to me is the, the level of, even though you were passionate in your commentary, you didn't seem over the top. You didn't seem angry at the person recording you. You just were delivering a very important message that mattered to you. And so now you've taken all of that energy and let's, let's jump to today. So, so you, Trump gets elected in 2016 
And how did you think things were going for those four years of his administration? Well, I mean, I think uh, the last four years, there is no greater juxtaposition. There's no greater stark contrast between the first four and the last four of the last eight years. So, you know, I mean, we, we had a, a booming economy. Uh, President Trump lowered the corporate tax, which, by the way, if you want to keep jobs in your country, it might be smarter to have a, a lower corporate tax than China or other countries where businesses may go elsewhere. If you were going to tax people into oblivion and have unrealized uh, capital taxes, which I think Kamala does want to do, which is going to pu push people into homelessness, by the way, and push them out of their houses. And, and look, we didn't have any new wars. We had peace in the Middle East for all intents and purposes. You had the Abraham Accords. You had the lowest uh, illegal immigration that our country had seen. You finally had our veteran, uh, our VA, Veteran Affairs, that there was accountability going on so that if somebody didn't do their job, well, then finally we could fire them from the government and make sure that our veter veterans were being taken care of and that the job was being done correctly. You had, I mean, gosh, you had the right to try. Uh, he was saving us money from his his deals, making sure that other countries are paying their fair share. So our country is not the personal piggy bank of the rest of the world. So, I mean, but, but main things, I would say the economy was better. We had peace for the American people and we had more of a safe and secure border. And in my opinion, those are the three most important issues that voters care about, especially in this election, when the economy is not great, inflation is crushing working class America, where we're on the threat of nuclear war and under the threat of sending a generation of men and women overseas to fight wars that we didn't have under President Trump, and when you want to talk about women, you want to talk about Black Lives Matter, you want to talk about uh, actually caring about our people, why? Why does Kamala and Joe Biden feel so little about the American people that they won't secure the border? And Lakin Riley, a young American student in Georgia, would be alive today if it weren't for the Kamala Harris and Biden administration. My message is simple. I, I, I want Americans to come first. I want peace. I want prosperity. I want every single American to have the opportunity to succeed. And I think that's President Trump's message as well. It's amazing how so many of our differences are being imposed upon us by some of these, you know, so much of politics these days is cast by race, um, by, you know, gender, by, you know, abortion, by these really divisive issues. But it seems to me like you're talking about the big picture, the, the foundational parts of a nation that need to be shored up before we can worry so much about, you know, whether the other stuff, for instance, national security, uh, immigration, the, everyone in this country, every single human being in this country deserves the government to protect them equally. And that only happens with national security and domestic security. And that that is not at the forefront of people's minds has always been astonishing to me. And you, you, you clearly have this America first agenda. So many people think that's isolationist and greedy and we're not being empathetic to other nations. How do you answer to those people? I, I tried exceptionally hard not to roll my eyes when you were when you were saying that uh, no, about other people feeling that we have no empathy and that and that we're greedy. No, I want to make it clear. I will never apologize for wanting to put the needs of my people first, of wanting to put Americans first. I will never apologize for having that mentality and that ideology. When I, when I know that there are 500,000 homeless Americans, when I know there are 50,000 homeless veterans, when I know that there are 3.6 million black children living in poverty, how, how dare Democrats say they care about black lives, but they'll take care of the rest of the globe ahead of our people. And, and so you make a good point though, really, 
I ask voters in this election, foundationally, what what matters to you? Does it, I, and, and in my opinion, illegal immigration truly is, securing the border truly is the biggest issue and the most important national security threat. It, it, it is having a strong border to make sure that people aren't coming into our country that may want to do us harm, which by the way, FBI terror watch list people have been found at our border. So it is factually happening. Then you have the threat of the opioid epidemic and drugs. Oh my gosh, we're losing a generation of people. 300 Americans die daily from fentanyl. And then again, I'm going to keep bringing up this issue over and over because if women matter to Democrats, why, why won't they secure the border to stop sex trafficking? Why, why won't they secure the border to stop women and children and young girls from being sexually assaulted through that sojourn from whatever country they're coming from? And it could be around the globe to our country. Why won't they protect people? And if we just simply secured the border, so many of our issues, we could focus on other things and we could put money towards roads, and infrastructure and schools and having a big beefy military to make sure that we are standing strong with a stick that hopefully we won't have to go to war, but we'll be so big and mighty that people aren't going to mess with us. Peace through strength. Uh, I'm all about that as well. So economists warn that massive tax hikes could devastate your IRA and 401k account as the stock market braces for impact. With inflation on the rise and global uncertainty looming as it still is, it's clear why central banks and savvy Americans are turning to gold. In times like this, Proverbs 2120 reminds us to preserve what we've built. And right now, that wisdom points us toward gold. If you haven't had your eye on gold, time to make it a priority. I urge you to call my friends at Priority Gold to find out how they can help you diversify your savings with physical gold and silver. Call 1-800-405-GOLD or visit PriorityGold.com slash golden for a free gold info guide. Plus, see if you qualify for free shipping and storage. Act now to get your portfolio working for you while the market is golden. Call 1-800-405-GOLD to speak with a gold specialist or visit PriorityGold.com slash golden to learn more. That's 1-800-405-GOLD or PriorityGold.com slash golden. Final thing for you here. You've basically moved yourself to Pennsylvania. Everyone seems to agree this is the state that's going to matter. How how are things going? There's so many angles I could come at you with this, uh, Scott. It, it's just what are you seeing on the ground in Pennsylvania? There, there's a lot. So, <laughs> okay. Well, let me first. My organization. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me let me roll up my sleeves. Let me get ready. Okay. So my organization <laughs> is Early Vote Action. Dot com. That's earlyvoteaction.com. We have a state director. We have nearly 30 staff. In 2016, there were 950,000 more registered Democrats than Republicans. In 2020, that number is down to 650. Now today, that number is 350. We have narrowed the deficit by 300,000 in four years in a state that was decided by 80,000 votes. So who, Michelle, am I targeting? I'm going after the 80,000 truckers in Pennsylvania. I'm going after the 80,000 Amish in Pennsylvania. I'm going after the 400,000 members of the Jewish community, which by the way, after October 7th and the Democrats basically embracing Hamas and having their Hamas caucus within the uh, House of Representatives, that we're seeing the members of the Jewish community come over to the Republican Party. We're working on the 800,000 members of the veteran community. Pennsylvania is the fourth largest home state 
out of the entire union to veterans. And I'll tell you, they don't think kindly of stolen valor, Tim Walls, nor do they feel kindly about Kamala Harris and the Biden administration not only killing 13 of our service members during the debacle of a pullout from Afghanistan, but nor do they feel kindly about President Trump celebrating their families, celebrating their families at the Arlington Cemetery and Kamala attacking Gold Star families. And last, we are going after the 930,000 hunters. 30% of Pennsylvania hunters are not registered to vote. So we are going to the gun stores and the gun shows and the gun ranges and every single FFL, Federal Firearm License Company and organization. We are going to the American... Uh, legions and the VFW halls, and we're visiting fraternity houses and sorority row. We are bringing our message to any person that will dare to listen to us. And it's through this voter registration that we flipped Beaver County and we flipped Berks County and we flipped Bucks County and we are 300 voters away from flipping Lucerne County and we are a thousand voters away from flipping Center County where Penn State University is and we will be visiting all of the Penn State University football games that bring 100,000 people. And we are meeting people where we are, where they are. And if you can't tell, this is my passion. This is my life. I will spend every second for the next two months doing everything I can to save her. And I truly care. And, it, and if, if my passion is coming across to you, the, the viewer, the listener, the audience, I, I ask you, do everything you can. Over the next two months, please register more voters and knock on more doors and make more phone calls and write more postcards. And if you have the financial ability, please help me fund more people. Help me fund more staff by donating, by contributing, by financing our work at earlyvoteaction.com. You're, you're honestly, you're. You what drew me to you after really quite a while of me kind of just watching you on X and watching the videos and seeing what you're all about is this, this passion, this drive, this grit to, it's like you are willing to drop every ounce of blood that you have. And you, when you talk about save her, you're talking about saving America. I, I'm yes. really worried about that too. I, I'm really, I'm really, really worried about that too. I, I, I see the, the direction of the world right now is frightening. Free speech is, is legitimately under attack. Um, so I'll ask you this, and I like to ask my guests this question, and, and I hope, well, I'll, I hope it comes out right. What is your, <laughs> as you're doing all of this, as you're sweating and working and bleeding and, you know, crying and laughing and working, what gives you the most hope that what you're doing, because clearly, I, I, I got to be honest with you, you hear about the, the grassroots efforts, you hear about the people who go and knock on doors, and I, I never really met one that, and certainly mm -hmm. not one who is as committed as you are. So what gives you hope? What gives you hope right now, here we are a couple months away from the election, that all <sighs> that work is going to pay off? Uh, well, I, it's, it's hope through the numbers, the metrics, it's, it's little things like I, I want to, I want to boast on my team for a second. I mean, I, I went to the Philly Expo Center in December of 2023 and, and I'm so, even though I have 1.6 million followers, I'm the only person with access to my account. I read every comment. I'm interacting with every person. I read my direct messages. I write people back at three o'clock in the morning. I mean, I'm always, I'm a sponge listening and trying to learn from people. And Ellis was there. He's a dad of two young girls. Pam Propson was there. She's a bus driver that her heart is with the homeless and she even goes to shelters. Uh, Maria Seawick, just a, a, a wonderful grassroots volunteer in Montgomery County. Nicole Freed, a mom of 15. She birthed 15 beautiful children in Pennsylvania. Wow. And all of the people we started at that event, and now uh, they're, they're all on my team. What inspires me is the stories of the people that... <laughs> that have come together to save our country. We're, we're all normal. We're all normal, average people 
that we see our country. She is on life support. She is failing. She is struggling to, to breathe. And we're just, we're just normal people trying to do everything we can, like the founders to save our country. And so it's the stories that bring me in and, and it's their why for Nicole, it's her 15 kids. You know, for, for me, my dad is a, is a retired Navy captain. My grandfather, uh, Irving Stahl Pressler, he was also a retired Navy captain, bless his soul. And, you know, I didn't serve in our military, but I firmly believe, and I don't mean this disrespectfully to our military and all of those that have served honorably, I feel that this is my very different way of service, that this is my way of giving back to the country. And so to anyone that does see this, that does hear this, I ask you, what is your why? Why should we save this grand experiment, this gift that we were given? And, and I just, I ask you, translate your why into positive action. Translate all of the anger, all of the frustration, everything that you're feeling, and, and translate that into positive action to save our country. So I can't ever recall meeting someone with the level of enthusiasm and dedication and passion as Scott Pressler has, not only going around the nation, cleaning up communities and just being really forceful with people about why he feels this matters, but then up and moving himself to Pennsylvania for the next two months to, to make the campaign work there in that enormously important battleground state. And he knows that's important, which is why he's there. But to, to look at success one registrant at a time, one new registered Republican at a time, I find this to be really impressive. I, I, I've i just never met anyone like Scott before, and I felt that we owed him an episode right here. So like Scott Pressler, be brave and do good, and we will see you next time. Hey, everybody, this is Scott Bressler. I'm here at the Trump rally in Wilkes Bear. This is Luzerne County. Guys, we are 1,042 voters away from flipping Luzerne County from blue to red. I just filmed live with Newsmax. Thank you for the opportunity. Everybody, register to vote at your current address. Make a plan to vote this November. Pennsylvania wins the White House. It saves the country. It saves the world. Let's win Pennsylvania.